All right, let's start with a nice and simple one. So this one here is asking what kind of data we can represent with binary sequences. It gives us three options. It gives us a string of characters right over here, colors, or audio recordings. Now the answer to these types of questions is pretty much always going to be all of the above because the key here is that computers can represent everything as binary sequences. And in fact, it needs to represent everything as binary sequences because that's how the hardware interprets the data using on and off states of electricity. Now this question here is very similar, but it's trying to throw you a little curveball by offering this option right over here, machine language instruction. Now it's making it sound like maybe this is something a little different, but it's actually not. All this comes down to is that your code, when you're finished writing it, is going to turn into binary. It's going to compile into zeros and ones, and that's how the computer is able to read your code. So just like you can represent integers, which we know from the first time we learned binary, and we know you can represent alphanumeric characters, such as using an ASCII chart. We also represent machine language instructions as what we call binaries, which is your compiled code, which then the computer can actually read and do something with, making the answer here also one, all of the above. Usually the answer to these is all of the above. Now this question here is going to try to disambiguate between analog and digital. So analog is what is used to refer to basically images or sounds or other things that have a continuous type of structure. So for example, you might think of sound in analog as having kind of this continuous type of value, right? So here you might have a value that's something like, I don't know, 10.6 or something, right? Now digital is very different. Digital is represented by bits and it's what modern computers use. You might think of the same type of data in digital kind of represented in a kind of blockier sort of way, maybe something kind of like this. And you might imagine that the values of this are not going to be continuous. So for example, this same value here might just be 10. This value here might be 3, while this might be like 3.3, 2.6 or something, right? And these would be represented as binary. For example, you would have here your 0, 1, 1 for your 3, and your 10 here might be your 1, 0, 1, 0, etc. So what this comes down to is that we need to find regions of this and kind of extrapolate them into what would be our binary equivalent. This process right here is what's called sampling. The way sampling works is you take a set of values in analog, such as this analog audio signal, and you measure it at regular intervals. Each of these measurements is called a sample, and the sample is represented as a sequence of bits. As such, the answer to this one here is B. The difference between analog data and digital data overall is that analog is continuous and digital data is not. You have a fixed number of bits. So you have to pick parts of the sample of your analog data and represent those as bits. A similar idea to analog and digital is the idea of overflow and round off errors. Both of these happen because you have a fixed number of bits to try to represent an unlimited number of information. So for example, numbers are infinite. They go as high as you can imagine. Much like there's numbers between numbers, there's fractions within fractions. However, when you're dealing with digital data, you only have a fixed number of bits. So let's look at this question to see how this ties into overflow. So in this question here, we have basically two positive integers and they are added together and eventually they, they lead to an overflow error. So this is asking which of these explains how an overflow error happens. So the best way to explain how an overflow error happens, imagine if we're using decimals, not think about binary here, and let's say we're adding 99 plus one. However, let's say that I tell you that you can only use two place values, two digits, right? So the value of this is 100, but if you only use two digits, the best you can represent here is zero, zero. So with just two digits, 99 plus one just gives you zero, right? And what that means is that we've overflowed. Instead of going to 100, we wrap right back around to zero. So let's go back to binary world. Let's say that we have at most three bits, right? So let's say that the highest number we can represent is 111 in binary, which we know is seven. If we add one to that, we're going to end up with eight, which is one, zero, zero, zero. Now, if I tell you that you can only represent up to three bits, then suddenly you don't get this last bit right here. So one, one, one plus one, so seven plus one, will just go back to being zero. This is what is overflow. As described here, this means that the program can only use a fixed number of bits. In this example, it was three, and the computed sum is greater than the maximum representable value. So in this example, the computed sum was eight, right? And the maximum value was seven. Now, roundoff is a similar concept to overflow, but it's a little bit different. 
Overflow deals with things being larger than your maximum allowable number of bits. Round off is similar, but it deals with numbers being more precise than what you can muster. So let's give an example here. Let's make a little timeline here or a number line. And let's say numbers between 10 and zero. And this is gonna be just in decimal. Now in mathematics, we know that there's really an infinite number of values between this. You can have a value here, which is, you know, like 2.13, all the way down. And there's any number of decimals that you can imagine between the numbers zero and 10. Unfortunately, when we're dealing with digital data, we don't have an unlimited number of bits to represent this. We might only have, for example, uh, eight bits or 16 bits or 32 bits. So if you have 32 bits, you will only be able to represent a certain number of things, even if you can represent decimals. What this means is that there is going to be some numbers, some precision of numbers, some very specific decimal that you're not going to be able to represent. You just don't have an infinite number of bits. So this rules out this concept right here. So these options are nonsense. The account balances are represented by an unlimited number of bits. Obviously, we know that we have a fixed limited number of bits, so these are definitely not correct. And we also know this is not about overflow. This is talking here about numbers being mathematically imprecise. So when we're talking about imprecision, we're not really talking about overflow. Overflow means that we're trying to represent a number that's too big. What this is, is round off errors. Round off errors is when you want a number to be very precise, but you just don't have enough bits to represent that. And that's exactly what we're dealing with here. Now here's an interesting problem. This one's going to be about the number of things we can represent with binary numbers. Now in this scenario here, we have a video game and the video game has different movements represented by up, say left, right, and down. Now in this video game here, they gave these different numbers, right? So it says that each direction is stored in memory as a sequence of four bits. And notice that the four bits is very important here. So we have four bits, and let's say we represent these as follows. Maybe this is zero, maybe this is one, this is two, this is three. It doesn't really matter which numbers we use for which, it just matters that we can represent that many. Now for this, we actually only need two bits, right? We have zero, we have one, we have two, and we have three. Now it says we're gonna add four additional things, right? We're gonna add the northwest, east, southwest, and southeast. And we'll call these four, five, six, and seven. Now we know that we actually don't need more than four bits to represent that. We can do four, five, six, and seven. So here we have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So as we can see here, with four bits, we actually have way more than we need. And as such, four bits are more than enough to store the eight directions. Don't think about bits as the absolute number of things you can represent. Four bits doesn't mean you only represent four things. Four bits is what you can use to generate the numbers that you can represent. So here with four bits, you see that we can actually go all the way up to 16, right? So this is four bits. The maximum number is 15 right over here. So we can go from zero to 15. All right, now here's a pretty tricky problem. So in this one here, we start with this number right here and it says it's going to transform it into this number by basically adding three zeros to the end. In fact, what it's asking here is which of the following correctly describes the relationship between these two numbers. Now, this might make you think that what you want to do is to calculate the actual value of this thing and the value of this thing and compare them. Uh, but that's actually quite a lot of work because this is a pretty big number. Now, you can do it that way and we're going to do it that way as well. But what I actually want to show you is a simpler way. Uh, one approach we can do here is actually to do the same transformation to a smaller number. Let's say a nice and small number, such as, how about the number one? So if we do that to the number one, we add three zeros to the end. Let's see what we do. We have zero, zero, one, and we add three zeros. We actually just end up with the number eight. This is decimal for eight. We could try the same with number two. So we start with the number two, and we add three zeros, we actually end up with 16. We know that if this is eight, this is 16 right here, right? One, two, four, eight, 16. And for good measure, we can do the same thing with four. This is one, this is two, four. So we start with one, zero, zero. We add three zeros. Now we have 32. One, two, four, eight, 16, 32. So the relationship between these, eight is eight times more than one. 16 is eight times more than two. 32 is eight times more than four. You can see we get the same type of result no matter what we do.
As it turns out, that's what the answer is. The transformed number is eight times the value of the original number. This is probably the easiest way to come up with this, is you start with just a really simple example of it. The reason this works is because you're actually adding three bits. And as you might recall, whenever you add a bit, you multiply the value of it by two. Actually, whenever you add this zero to the end, you multiply by two. If you add two zeros, you multiply by four. If you add three zeros, you multiply by eight. Now that's kind of a hard rule to remember. So in the pressure of the exam, it's probably just better to just remember to try with a really simple example. Now that out of the way, let's try with the actual numbers and see if this works out to be the same. Now to evaluate these numbers, they're pretty big. So we're gonna start with a pretty big number line here. So we do one, two, so that should be enough. Now let's uh, try to see what these numbers are. So that first one we have on the right is zero, zero, zero. And then we have a one here, a zero here, and one, one, one. So it says 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus eight. And he throws into the calculator, or just do it in your head. You get 232. Let's see what the other value is. So this is 232. Now let's do this other one. This one's, this one's one, zero, one, one, one. So this is 16 plus eight plus four plus one, which is 29, right? It's 29. And the other one was 232. And we know that if we divide 232 by 29, we will get eight. Or maybe you don't, but your calculator does. Now all that said, even though we solved it out in the end by actually converting the numbers, I don't recommend doing it that way. I think it's better in this kind of example to pick a simplified example, like we started with one, two, and four, and see what happens with those and see if you can spot the pattern on those. All right, we'll end here with a really tough one. They actually really like to ask this question, so let's go over it real quick. So this looks like it's about the internet because it's talking about IPv4, but it's actually not, this is about binary. So here's the question. It says that we have an IP address. We start out with a 32-bit address, right, which is IPv4, and now it says that it's going to represent this IP using IPv6, which is gonna use a 128 bit address instead. So the question here is not about IP at all, actually. The question is about how many more IPs can we represent using 128 bits rather than 92 bits? What this is saying basically is if you add 96 more bits, how many more things can you represent? Now, you might be tempted right away to think about this and say, okay, it's gonna be 96 times as many, right? You just add 96 more bits, 96 times more things to represent. But by now you might recognize this is not really how it works, right? Binary doesn't work that way. When you add another bit, you don't just add one other option, you add twice as many options. When you add two bits, you add four times as many options. When you add three bits, it's eight times as many options. Let's illustrate why it works that way. The simplest example of how this works out is think about having just two bits, right? With two bits, you have these numbers. You have zero, zero, you have zero, one, one, zero, and then you have one, one. That's four total, right? This is four. Now you know that if we add one more bit, we would get the following options. We would have a good friend zero, zero, zero. We would have zero, zero, one. This is a total of eight. Now let me show it to you this way because this might actually help you illustrate why this actually goes up by twice as many. Instead of just drawing them out, let's actually copy these out like this. Put them over here and put them over here. Now that we add one bit, we can now represent these as all of the previous combinations as before with zeros here and then all the combinations as before with a one here. So we did all the previous combinations, so all these four things with a zero and then all of these four things with a one. So essentially by adding the bit, we actually duplicate how many things we can represent. And the same thing is true if we add one more bit. So let's take this, let's make it real small. And let's do the same thing. Let's say we're gonna add all zeros over here and all ones over here. As you can see, we've duplicated this. So now instead of eight, we went from eight to 16. What does this mean? Whenever we add a bit, we duplicate the amount of things we can represent. So how does this help us with this problem? Let's take a look. So to illustrate how this works at a higher level, let's look at it this way. Let's say that on the left here, you have bits, so let's start with two, and here you have combinations, let's say combos, or like higher, the highest number you can represent. So we know that with two bits, we have four. With three, we can go all the way up to eight. With four bits, we can go all the way up to 16 five bits, we can go all the way up to 32. With six bits, we can go all the way up to 64. Now, what does this mean? Let's look at, if we go from two bits to four bits, we get four times as many. If we go from two bits to five bits, 
we get eight times as many. If we go from two bits to six bits, so we're adding four bits, we get 16 times as many. If I want to go from two to six, I am multiplying how many combinations I get here by two times two times two times two, which is the same thing as two to the fourth. To go to seven, so to go from two to seven, I have five more bits, which is two times two times two times two times two, as many combinations, which is two to the five. So what's the moral here? If you add 10 bits, you get two to the 10 times as many. If you add 20 bits, you get two to the 20 times as many, right? This is basically two times two times two all the way to 20, right? So what happens if we have 96 more bits? Well, if you add 96 bits, then you will have two to the 96 times as many, which is answer D. It's a very common question that you might get asked. So it's good to know how to do it. Thanks for watching. I'm Flavio and I'll be back with more soon.